What's up, Internet world? Matthew here. It is Sunday, September 11th, 2016. This is Brain Droppings number two. I am here in the gorgeous Gardner's Park Nature Preserve. I have this beautiful salt marsh. We got the sunset coming down. Houses, gorgeous Robert Moses Causeway to the Needle. And the prestigious, where is it? There, there it is, Fire Island Lighthouse. So, uh, I want to thank everybody who has been subscribing and liking and following and sharing. Uh, I launched the channel officially two days ago, uh, Friday night, September 9th. And I've, I've hit over 80 likes on the Facebook page. So I want to thank everybody for that. I want to reach out and thank my brothers. Uh, you guys have been very supportive and I appreciate it. So I want to get right to it because I'm losing sunlight. This is take number four and I keep going off on weird tangents. Uh, I didn't film anything last week or nothing that I felt like sharing. Uh, I've been going through a rough couple of weeks. Uh, some emotionally charged, uh, complicated stuff. I'm not going to talk about it anytime soon, but I will when it becomes uh, applicable and necessary. Let me share that part of my story. But today, I want to kind of go the opposite direction of the last video. Last video, we talked about getting into good habits and keeping those good habits, especially if you suffer from kind of depression like I do, dysthymia, low and slow, peaks and troughs emotionally, uh, chemically. So I don't always notice when I'm going into a depression. Uh, sometimes people don't. You don't notice when your anxiety is starting to ramp up more for those who have suffered from anxiety issues. Sometimes you really do. You could get very comfortable. You know, it, it's like a frog being boiled. You know, if you throw a frog into really hot water right away, into boiling water, the frog will jump out. But if you put a frog in water and you slowly turn the heat up, the frog will adjust its own body temperature and cook itself from the inside out. A little gruesome illustration there for you, but you get it. So, uh, over the past few weeks, months, really, I think, as I've been going over my life, especially with some of the stuff that's been going on for me personally, again, not getting into any details or anything, but uh, I realized that I've been falling into a bad habit. I've been going to my nature therapy, I've been talking to people, I've been keeping my diet good, I've been exercising, but my outlook has slipped into, I'm going to try to do this, very big deal for a photosensitive person uh, to get a little sunlight in. But I noticed that I've been slipping into a bad habit, and that bad habit is regret. Uh, I was actually talking to my dad earlier, about 45 minutes ago, when I was leaving with my, to take my kid to my ex-wife's house. And I was saying how you know I'm really happy that I've got this channel going, and I'm really looking forward to the results, but I just wish I had started sooner. I wish I had cataloged my journey. I've grown so much over the past couple of years. I wish I didn't spend all that time working on that damn book and just cataloged me. I wish I realized that I had personal value. My story had personal value. I could have shared that value. And my dad caught me. He says, shoulda, coulda, woulda. What are you talking about? That's why you got to keep good people around. I didn't even catch it. And I stopped. I went, holy crap. I've been doing this for a while. I don't even know how long. I, I, I Honestly, it's probably been a while that I've been thinking about all the things I could have done and should have done and would have done. Um, in my Yale study logs, uh, I think one or maybe two of them, I talked about how I got, was forced out of the health and fitness world because I didn't have the right business mindset or the, great, uh, the right appreciation of business, of marketing, of sales. And that's on me. That's my screw up. But... You know, life is so, sometimes it feels like you're just struggling to survive. You know, we all want to get to that point of thriving, but sometimes you feel like you're just struggling to survive. And in a survival situation, you can't use regret at all. It's useless. You know, your truck goes off the road and you're stranded somewhere. You can't say, if only I didn't swerve to avoid that squirrel, I wouldn't be stuck out here in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. You know, you can't say that kind of stuff. You have to go, okay, the axle's broken on my truck. I can't get any signal out. It's getting dark. I know there's wolves and bears in the area. What do I have? What do I do? I need, what do I need? I need fire. I need water. I need this. I need X, Y, Z. I need security. I need to, you know, 
be ready to sleep the night here. I need to do... In your own life, regret is going to kill you. It's going to keep you stranded. You spend more time regretting what happened, the relationships you stayed in or should have left, the job you took or shouldn't have stayed with, whatever it is. Wherever you are in your life, your ups and your downs. I'm not talking chemically. I'm talking, you know, there's some things you can't change. You can't change uh, having a chemical imbalance. You can't change having a neurological condition, but you can change what you do with it. You can change where you are and you can change how you perceive it. I'm going to put a link to one of Jason Silva's most recent talks about how we can change the past in here only. We talked about mental cognition. You change how you perceive your past, how it's not a burden. You know, I, I, I've talked about how you know, we look at some of our, our famous great minds like Steve Jobs and Sir Isaac Newton and Einstein and Tesla. They were most likely all on the autistic spectrum. These are people who took their maladies and turned them into assets. Uh, Michael Phelps is ADHD like me and a very oddly proportioned body. A guy has 23 Olympic medals. His teachers called him a loser. Teachers have called a lot of great people losers. Not ripping on teachers, I'm just saying. You cannot think to where you are and say, if only this didn't happen to me. If only I had made this decision. If only I had... From a quantum mechanical standpoint, the version of you that didn't marry that person and married the other person exists in an alternate timeline. Maybe someday we'll be able to crack little windows in space and time and look in and see your alternate self, but you're not your alternate self. You are you. And you're in this situation, whatever it is. And there's good and bad in, in all of it. And some days it may seem worse than others, but here you are. And you've got to live with the situation around you. So I've got to live with mine. I have to accept the fact that I wasted five years, five years, writing, redrafting, and finally self-publishing a book that only one person has read, Troy Soriano, I love you, uh, to completion. And instead of realizing that... See, my book is all facts and figures. I had a little bit of ranting and rambling in there, but it was all facts and figures. And... <clears throat> It wasn't till much later that I realized my story has value. My journey has value. And when I was talking to my dad before, I was saying, you know, if I had started recording my journey, documenting my journey like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, you know, I could have started this channel two years ago when things had just taken a dramatic turn for me and I wanted to do more with my life and yada yada. But at the same time I realized, if you had seen me two years ago, nobody, or I don't think, anybody would really take me all that seriously. I was angry. I was twisted. I was paranoid. I was egomaniacal. I was not... I know some of my friends, some of my dear loved ones would argue with me. I say that I'm being hard on myself. I say that I've come a long way. And I appreciate it. I appreciate every step. Now, part of me wishes I had started this channel early, but part of, you, part of me kind of wishes you didn't see that version of me. That as much, as, I, as much growing as I have to do, I think I kind of had to have gotten to this point before I could really have started documenting it. I have a lot of failures behind me. I have a lot of, I have a lot of hurt. And, uh, sorry. I think it has value to talk about. Wow, did not expect that. Four takes. So, that's my story. Uh, and it's me telling you this that's kind of my therapy. Reminding you all that your story has value. So, I'm going forward on that. I'm 
looking at my situation, looking at what I can do with it, what I can offer. And I'm hoping that it inspires you. Get off your ass. No regret. And no stopping. So, if you are able to be as raw as me, uh, I want you to go down in the comments below and I want you to talk about your regret. What keeps coming back? I keep coming back to, oh, if I had a better business mind, I wouldn't have got washed out of health and fitness. I would still be a Pilates instructor or a massage therapist or a Kung Fu instructor. I could have. That's my regret. And I keep looking back on it. And I'm, I've got to keep my head out of that. So you hold me to it if you ever hear me talk about that shit again. Not in the, the Yale study video. Those are long since recorded. So I think this has been plaguing on me for a while. But no, talk about your regret. What do you keep coming back to and saying, I wish I, if only I, if only this hadn't? Uh, if you're bold, I hope you're bold. Uh, by putting it down there, what you're going to do is you're going to hold yourself accountable to everybody else. Because we're going to stay on top of each other, right? We're going to look out for each other, right? You're going to hold me accountable. You see me slipping in into a depressive funk or something, I need you to hold me accountable to it and say, what have you been doing? What have you been, what have you been letting go of? So, put that down in the comments below. Throw yourself out there and get yourself out there. Stop looking back. You know, it, Jason Silva's talk, you're going to love it. All, it, it. It's very good, but you're here. This is now. Let's go do something special together. All right, guys. I will film another time. Uh, probably next weekend, and eventually I will get into a steady pattern of when I'm going to publish these things, when they're edited and sound checked and all that other stuff. So uh, as soon as I know exactly what days this will be published, I'm going to try to hold to that on a regular uh, steady routine. All right, that's enough. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you next week. Bye.